Hello, everybody. We opened up a, uh, another unopened package as we're getting to the bottom of these. This was from uh, a, uh, New Jersey, and this was just at the end of January. And I opened up the pack here, and I don't know if we'll have time to get through all of these, but this includes quite a, a couple programs that I've been looking for for a long time. And we'll see how much we get through today before we go to another one. Bought them all from the same seller. We have the 1977 Cotton Bowl between Houston and Maryland. The 1976 Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl, which is from the same football season. It's just one was played uh, late. Uh, this was New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, so they played 24 hours apart from each other between Texas Tech and Nebraska. And from 1987, a boxing program where one of my all-time favorites, Thomas the Hitman Hearns, uh, won the vacant middleweight title from Juan Domingo the Hammer rolled in. So uh, let's start with uh, no bags here, unfortunately, but it was packed well. It had a had some bubble wrap and uh, some you know, piece of cardboard in there. So cover-wise, there's a little bit of a break right there but nothing else nothing awful this is going to be one of those that it's very difficult to look through though i can tell because of the manner of the spine it's going to be very difficult to hold and keep open this is uh houston and maryland maryland went undefeated that year in a year that the acc champ in back in the days when the acc football champion did not have an automatic bid and Houston would win this game anyway. The Maryland player pictured up here is Joe Campbell, who would wind up being a third-round pick for the Saints, I believe. And uh, the cover is, uh, I think that's Danny Davis for Houston and Mark Mangus for the Terrapins. So you have to understand a little, maybe this is going to be a little different to, uh, going to be a little harder for me to keep open. Uh, the Houston player pictured is Wilson Whitley, who was a first-round pick of the Bengals after this game and would spend several years in the NFL with the Bengals. As I said, this, is, this one's going to be clearly a difficult one to go through because I don't want to break the spine. This was the Maryland head coach, Jerry Claiborne. I think we've seen Jerry before with the old-school Maryland helmets, white with the yellow M. Uh, the, when Claiborne left, it was replaced by Bobby Ross. That was one of the first things that went. They went to the script Terps with the red helmet. Touchdown on Hyatt. Hyatt, the people that brought you CPAC this past weekend. Insert that where you will. There's Houston's head coach, Bill Yeoman, who always the innovator of the Veer offense. Toyota, the Toyota Corolla, still around to this day. And there's the coaching records of Jerry Claiborne and Bill Yeoman. And this is the Cotton Bowl queen in her court. Kathy Ferguson of the University of Houston reigned as the queen. The, apparently this was, uh, you got each team got one person on the court and then the rest are members of the Southwest Conference. One each from the Southwest Conference teams. Maryland's recruiting success. Honesty, persistence, and luck. Well, that'll do it. The home of the Texas State Fair, which is where they always played the Cotton Bowl until recent years. This is a program I've been wanting to get for a long time. Let's see if I can, if I can prop this up. Maybe that'll help. Cheers for Hager Slacks, certainly a name of the 70s. There's uh, Steve Atkins, who was a second round pick by the Packers, didn't have a great professional career. But and there was the 1976 Cotton Bowl race, which Houston won on the basis of their game against Texas Tech, where both teams were either undefeated or Tech was undefeated. And Houston had one loss. Houston won the game and the conference, sending Nebraska to the 
blue bonnet ball, which we may have to do another night. French's America's Favorite Mustard. I guess it still is. Three seats for next year's Cotton Bowl from your friends of C at CBS Sports. It's a quick little synopsis on the remaining Southwest Conference schools at the time. The Cotton Bowl, a New Year's tradition since 1937. Yeah, I think we're just going to do this one for tonight, and then we'll move on to the other ones tomorrow. This is, again, this is an article on Wilson Whitley, the Southwest Conference Defensive Player of the Year, and I think he won either or both the Lombardi and the Outland Trophy. There's the Maryland athletic scene with uh, Columbia gold medalist Steve Shepard, and up there is Lefty Grizzell, Houston's head coach at the time in basketball. I'm sorry, this is the Maryland assistants, which the guys you would recognize here, there is former Maryland coach Joe Krivak, who was replaced by Bobby Ross. I think that's the only names that you would recognize. There's some of the Terrapins. Tim Wilson, who played several years at the Houston Oilers as a blocking back. And that's uh, the various how Maryland got here. The interesting part about that is, and this is how Houston got here, there's that Texas Tech-Houston game. Uh, the interesting part about Maryland that year is they really, they were had a really good team, but it was the one year in the 70s that they didn't have to play Penn State, who always beat them. Maryland never beat Penn State when I was a kid, as long as I can remember. I think they, one year under Joe Krivak, they got a tie. There's the uh, starting lineups in the midst of Dr. Pepper, the Maryland roster, the Houston Cougars to watch. How many of these players? I think I think it's Alois or Lois Blackwell played a year or two with Dallas. I remember the player, but I don't necessarily remember. And now we can leave this flat a little bit. Uh, there's... Otis Birdsong, who was an all-pro or all uh, all-star in the NBA with the Kings and the Nets. And let's see how many of the Houston coaches you may recognize. None that I can right offhand. And this is the Cotton Bowl build-up with the famous Kilgore Rangerettes and the both teams' bands. And there's pictures of the, of the Terrapin there. Steve Atkins, who, like I said, was a Packers draft pick. Lloyd Burris, who spent probably close to 10 years with the Chiefs. Joe Campbell, who was drafted by the Saints. Charlie Johnson played a few years in the NFL, I think with the Eagles. Vince Kinney was a special teamer for Denver. There's Mark Mangus, who got, had a cup of coffee with the Cardinals. Neil Okowitz had a long time career with the Redskins after not being drafted, and he was there for a, a, a long time as a Redskin linebacker. a sizable program, it really is. Eric Sievers, who played about 10 years in the NFL with the Chargers and I think the Patriots. So as you can see, a lot of these, this was a very good Maryland team. Tim Wilson, who I mentioned earlier with the Oilers, is Earl Campbell's blocking back. The Sensor Trilight commemorates the Cotton Bowl Classic. Now let's take a look at the 77 Cougars. I mean, they, I, I, a Blackwell, I think, had a cup of coffee with the Cowboys. And future head coach of ill repute, so to speak, at Houston, Baylor, and other, and other schools, uh, Art Riles. Maryland has more NFL.
NFL players are listed. You see this. Randy Love was a special teamer for quite a few seasons with the St. Louis Football Cardinals. Bobby Orr, no relation to the hockey star. Now the page turns from red to black. And there's Wilson Whitley, as we mentioned earlier. And the statistics for both of these fine schools. Houston won this game 30 to 21. It's more of how Maryland and how Houston got here. This is the previous year's, no, this is, I'm sorry, the 1970 Cotton Bowl. This was the Texas Notre Dame game. I was thinking it was the 78, or, uh, but that would be the following year, the, the Notre Dame and Texas for the national championship. And there's a scorecard and some parade of Cotton Bowl stars of the past, Southwest Conference stars. In the Hall of Fame now, it'll begin to get harder to turn again. Not a Cotton Bowl crossword, I bet you that was a lot of fun to do back in the day. Probably a lot of wrong answers now because uh, so many records have been changed and broken. It's hard to believe that this game is now 45 years old. Jesus. The Cotton Bowl records at the time. It's various scores of the game. Very deep program, I have to say. Very, uh, this is what you expect to pay for when you buy a program. Outstanding players of Cotton Bowl. There's Ed Hargett of Texas A&M, who was Archie Manning's backup for a few years with the Saints. And then we finish up with Coca-Cola. That is a very nicely made program. That's the kind that when you go to a game, you don't mind paying for. Now, I didn't do this, but you can see why it was hard to open. See how... Uh, it's like a has a spine that's not glued it's like a rigid spine and then it's not necessarily it's not stapled it's like a rigid spine and uh, that's why it's a little harder to keep open when I'm going through it but very well done very pleased to have that as part of my collection I was looking forward to getting that one uh, because that one took a while to go through we'll uh, put the other ones off until next time so thanks for watching hit that subscribe button if you wouldn't mind it doesn't do me any good for the pocket, but it does me some good for the mind. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.